Marino Show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Marino Show. I'm your host, David Marino, and I'm so excited to have our guest today. She is the final girl from Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. Melanie Kinneman, who played Pam Roberts in that installment of the series. She's also had a number of other guest starring appearances in shows like Cheers, Hill Street Blues, General Hospital, the list goes on and on. But without further ado, Melanie Kinneman, thank you so much for joining me for the show, Melanie. Oh, it's great to be here. It's so great to meet you. And thanks for having me. Yeah, I have to tell you, I thought you kicked ass in Friday the 13th Part 5. I sent that to you in the email when I first connected with you. Mm -hmm. I think you're the only final girl in the series that got to take on the killer with the chainsaw. And that was awesome. Hey, I, I tried my best. I tried to take him on. And a chainsaw was handy. It definitely was. So for you, what is it meant to be a part of this franchise? I know you do a lot of horror cons and you talk to a lot of fans, but for you, what has this meant to you all these years later to be a part of this iconic series? You know, it took years to realize how important or great or what an honor it was. Because when I was doing it, I hadn't seen any Friday the 13th movies. I didn't know anything about them. Uh, actually, when I got cast, I asked to see part four. So I would know some of the history at least, you know. So it took all these years to find out through the fans that it was first of all, an honor to be a final girl. Um, I learned the importance of the franchise and, and the love for it and, and just the loyalty to the whole franchise, let alone part five. Part five took a while though to get its, its groove, you know? I happen to love part five because it's different. I think it had a different aesthetic. It just had a different vibe, but I like things that are different. I know, as you mentioned at the time, though, when it came out, it wasn't fully embraced because it wasn't really, quote, Jason as the killer. But, you know, was that tough in the beginning when that came out for you being in that film that originally it didn't kind of have the love that it has today? Again, I didn't know right away. Um, I'd say it took a few months, believe it or not. At the screening, at, at the big premiere, People seemed very excited. There was a little bit of a backlash maybe weeks after that. I started reading things in Variety and some of the entertainment uh, newspapers and, and, and journals. And um, I didn't really understand the backlash to tell you the truth, because again, I didn't know the history. For me, it was Jason because it was a masked killer for my character that I was being pursued by and, and ch being chased by. So I didn't know f any difference. Jason, not Jason, it was a killer chasing me. But again, that being said, after the fact, I'd say a few months later, I, f I found out, but I really, really, really found out when I went to my first convention, which was many years later. Uh, my first convention was 2011, I believe. And that's when the fans started really showing me their hatred. <laughs> so, oh no. Yeah, it was a love-hate thing. It was very extreme. Yeah. It went from people loving it, standing in line to meeting you, to meet you, and then people saying things as they're walking by and saying how much they dislike you. And my attitude was, look, people, it's just a movie. I think sometimes people don't, they forget to disconnect the character from the person. Right. But I feel like today, though, it's found its, its audience. And I think people have learned to appreciate it. Look at all these I, years later. Yeah. yeah, I've come back around to it, which I think is great. And I also love just, you know, the relationship that you had with um, Reggie Shabar Ross's yeah. character in the movie. I thought that that was such a, a, a like a cool relationship to have and that he survived at the end as well. And uh, yeah, and I grew up watching him on different strokes. So for me, it was like, wow, this is cool, you know, to see him in that kind of movie. He and I are friends. We're still in touch. I haven't seen him in a little while, but we used to see each other quite a bit. We had a little uh, business venture together. So I would see him, we'd meet. Uh, he was great to work with. I enjoyed every minute of it. He was very professional. I think at the time he was maybe 13, 14 years old, but a real pro. And it was just a pleasure to work with him. Do you keep up with anybody else from the film? I know like it's, 
y'all are all doing different things now, but have you been able to see, I know at the horror cons you've reconnected. Yes, with I've them. seen Debbie Voorhees, um, Tiffany Helm, um, John Shepard, I've seen, and Ron Sloan. I love Ron Sloan. So I've seen quite a few of them and I think I'll see some of them again this year because I'm doing, all of a sudden I'm doing like four conventions back to back. So I'm sure I'll bump this up. I'm gonna see Lar Park Lincoln, which of course is from a different movie. Yeah. Um, and, and she's a lot of fun, so. You've been able to kind of form relationships with some of the other final girls from Friday the 13th? Yes, I mean, I, again, I don't see them that much. Mm, I liked Kimberly Beck. She was my first foray into uh, Friday the 13th because I saw part four, as I said, prior to shooting part five. And she and I had the same agent, so I would see her. And um, I thought she was great in part four. So we've seen each other sporadically at conventions. She's very nice. I, again, I saw, uh, met Lar on a couple of shows, shows and uh, she's great. I've met most of the final girls now and they're all, it's fun to bump into them, spend maybe a weekend with them on a, on a show. Yeah. How did you get into to acting? Because I was reading that you were a dancer, right? Yeah. Originally, or how did yeah. you kind of get into television, film? Where did right. that end? I started out dancing when I was four. And my goal was to go to New York City and be a professional. So I did that. I was a singer dancer and I was in the chorus of shows. And from being in the chorus, I always wanted to act. I always wanted to be an actress, but I thought this would be my, my foot in the door, you know? literally to be a dancer. And then I started getting commercials that were dancing commercials. And I did the Dr. Pepper one. We actually got a Clio award for it. And that was the, it was a 1950s prom theme. And I was uh, Mary Lou in that. So that opened doors for me, believe it or not. The whole campaign of, of, of um, Dr. Pepper was a big deal. Of course, it's before your time. That was in the seventies, but it was uh, the heyday of doing those uh, big extravaganza commercials. They shot them for three days. It was like a Broadway show. So that got me in the door and I started studying with great acting teachers and auditioned and started to get roles. Uh, theater, I did a lot of theater and then some soaps and then TV was coming to New York, but I knew I had to move to Los Angeles to really get it going because everything was in LA. So I started out in New York and it was a great place to be. I love New York City and it was great training. Best teachers there. I'm partial, but it's a great place to start out. And you're actually from the East Coast, right? Yes, I'm from Massachusetts and then I moved to New York and okay. lived there for many years. Yeah. So I'm sure LA was a kind of a, was it a bit of a culture shock when you went from wow. East Coast to LA? What was that like? It was mind blowing. I didn't like it. I kept my, one of my bags packed. I got this apartment in Hollywood and I had new, obviously a bunch of luggage, but I kept one bag packed so I can make a hasty retreat because I really didn't like it here. Everything was different. You know, they say people are people and it doesn't matter where you're from. And I'm telling you, there's a difference in where you're from and the people in that place. People in New York are different than here in LA and I'm sure in the Midwest. And so uh, that was, as you said, a culture shock. And I did make friends, but it took a long time. And even the auditioning process was different. It was very, New York is very basic and, and, and interested in the, in the project, in the acting and, and the, just the basic stuff. Whereas LA was very glitzy and they were interested in periphery stuff. Like uh, if you were thin enough or, um, tall enough or good looking enough, all that stuff, which I, you didn't have in New York. After Friday the 13th part five came out, did that help or hinder your career moving forward? What, what was the experience like after that? After Friday, again, at that time, I had done things before it. So I had somewhat of a reputation, but I will say at that time, doing a Friday the 13th, was not a great deal. I mean, it was, here I was the lead in a film, you know, and it was paramount, but there was backlash. Yeah, it wasn't considered cool or good uh, in some circles. In some, it opened doors for me, but I will tell you the truth. I took it off my resume for a while because there was um, kind of, um, 
a snobbery about it in the film industry. When it comes to horror films in general, though, are you a fan of them or do you have a favorite that, that you kind of go back to? I'm not a big fan of horror. Uh, they're too scary. I have to say The Exorcist is my favorite movie. Um, I do like old Hitchcock, uh, all the classics, some Sam Peckinpah, which is really not horror, but to me it was, they're, you know, real suspenseful stuff. Um, the films now, the horror films now, the genre is very uh, dark, which is com funny coming from me because they say part five was the darkest of the, of the family. With the highest um, uh, killing. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but I think it was still in the 80s vibe. Now I find horror to be very graphic, very violent, and I'm not loving the stories, so. Yeah, I like the 80s vibe completely. Like I grew up in the 80s, that was my thing. My dad and I used to watch the Friday the 13th movies together. And I believe we went to see part five together. So it was funny, my dad loved watching Jason. He thought Jason was funny. So he liked seeing like the That's kills funny. and all those kind of things. Yeah. It is kind of funny when you look back. This guy never dies. Originally when part five came out and after it was done, there were plans for you to return in part six, right? Can you talk about that? I was signed when I got part five, I was signed on to do both films, part five and six. So it was a two picture thing. When we wrapped from part five, I was prepared and told that I would be start working in about six to eight weeks. So I went about preparing for that and I got, um, I think it was a phone call from my agent. It wasn't an email. It wasn't any of that stuff. It was an actual phone call from my agent saying that Paramount called. They're very distressed because they had every plans on John Shepard and myself doing part six. And John Shepard has decided that he does not want to do any more horror films. He doesn't want to do anything like this. And uh, so he wants out. And so that meant I was out because I said, well, I can still do it. <laughs> I'm a scream queen. And they, um, they said, no, the script was John and I. So without John, they weren't going to use me, which I thought, you know, they could have. Yeah, I definitely think they could have. And that would have been an interesting kind of continuation of the series. Honestly, I think that would have taken. I think, I think they should have continued. See, I'm with you on part five. I do like part five because it's so, it's something different. They had the courage to kind of break the cycle and try something new with part five, a new beginning. And then, then they found out Paramount saw the backlash and things. Oh, it didn't work. And so they wanted to go back to the old thing. But had they, I think, gone ahead with six where part five ended, which is what they were going to do. Part five, the very last scene, that last frame, Part six was going to start there. The only positive in that is that I live forever. I've never been killed in a Friday the 13th. <laughs> so I live together. I live forever. And um, it'll always be that way. So I'm a final girl that really is a final girl. And like you said, all these years later, you're still getting recognized for this film. Yeah, which is amazing. It's amazing. And I'm grateful to the fans because they're so loyal and they just love it forever. And I had no idea that was gonna happen. Did you have a favorite movie you were in or TV show or something that you did at I, that time? I have to, well, Hill Street Blues was my favorite television show when I first moved to Los Angeles. And that was my second job ever in LA. And that was a thrill to get. I mean, I worked with the greatest cast. Um, Cheers is another one. I, when I got cast in Cheers, it was a bigger role but I was thrilled to be in it. We rehearsed, they're, they're, the way they do it, they do it like a live play, like a Broadway show. So you rehearse all week. It's a three camera, so you rehearse with the cameras, you rehearse with the cast, Monday through Friday. Friday night, they shoot in front of a live audience. So uh, it's, it's just, it was just such a great experience. Mm -hmm. What are you working on now? Are there any projects that you're currently working on or any films that you're looking to do? 
Yes, I've been brought in on a film. They're not letting me talk about it. And I hate when they do that, but you know, it's in pre-production and, and all of that. So I will tell people what it is later. It is a, uh, how can I describe it? It's a 1970s horror film with a story, an interesting story. Um, I'm the villain in this. Oh, wow. Yeah. That'll be fun to see. I can't wait till that comes out. That'll be interesting to kind of see. And I like the 70s style. It's a whole different thing. Yeah. You know, if you remember those, those days, if you remember the films from the 70s that were horror, but not horror like the 90s. You know, and, and watching you on Crystal Lake Memories, um, talking about filming Friday the 13th mm -hmm. Live, mm -hmm. and the editing process, um, there's a pink sweater <laughs> that you uh. wear <laughs> that you have around, you know, tied around like your your outfit, your your neck, and it kind of like appears and doesn't appear like in the rain scene. Obviously, what did you think? Because I just love hearing you tell this story. When you watched that, did you pick up on it right away? Oh, immediately, immediately. I, it was first of all. I never liked that outfit. I don't know why I had that damn pink sweater tied from the beginning, you know, before the sequence of the running and the rain. I, I, anyway, so they decided that they want that wanted that costume. Fine. But if it's it, it naturally fell off when I was running in the chase scenes, leave it off. But there were some parts of the chase scene, as you understand, where it was still on because it was early. We shot for two days, that chase stuff. So what they got wrong, which still blows my mind because it's paramount with a continuity department. Once it fell off, you can't use the footage of bringing it back. You yeah. know, I'm running. It's, it's, like, it's, it's like Benny Hill. It's springing on. It's springing off. It's on. It's off. Leave it off. So that bothered me a lot. And I, and I did talk about that, as you know, in Crystal Lake Memories. And that seemed to really piss off the continuity uh, people on the film. And so his answer was, if she were a better actress, we would have been engrossed in what she was doing and no one would have noticed that the sweater was coming and going. Well, what? my answer, uh, that, that's bull because I don't care who it was, it could be Meryl Streep. If her shirt was coming on and off, you're gonna notice, I think. And it was a it was a bright pink thing. It was a pink thing. It wasn't like, you know, you know. Yeah, I agree with you and you did. Come on, this wasn't a small, no name uh, company. This was Paramount. Right. You know, And had we not had enough footage, but I ran for three days, I think with rain machines at night. I remember because they were night shoots and I was up, we started shooting at four or five at night. We had to wait till it got dark, but it was winter time. So it got dark, you know, about seven. And I shot until seven or eight in the morning. So I remember it distinctly that it was at least three nights. So there was a lot of footage of me running. When you think back to making Friday the 13th part five, what are your main memories from, from the movie and what kind of stays with you today? I enjoyed most, most of it. Um, there were some issues with the director, but for the most part, it was a great experience. Like I said, I was thrilled. It was a lead character in a film. Um, the conditions in some situations, other actors will tell you weren't, weren't ideal. But again, you were, you were dedicated to doing the best you could and portraying the character as best you could. So that was, that, you know, that was a joy because for me, the journey of the doing of it is the fun, not the end product. It's the doing of it that is the joy in acting for me. But um, I really loved the chainsaw scene. I got to work with Dick Warlock, who was a great stunt coordinator. Tom Morga, stuntman who played the fake Jason, fake Jason. I, I, he was great to work with. So we had to block everything out. Everything was rehearsed because it was a real chainsaw. And they wanted to make sure that I didn't dismember Tom <laughs> Morga. So I, I learned a lot. It was great. So my fond memories of, of that was that I learned so much 
and I learned it from some of the best people. My only disappointment was that a lot of the story, a lot of who Pam was, a lot of what I worked on and created to make her a full three-dimensional character didn't make it to the scene, to the, to the final cut, because they cut things out because the kills were more important. That was interesting to me. I didn't know that about horror, that the kills are important and all the other stuff isn't. So when I saw the, the film, the final cut, I was a little disappointed in that. You know, they skipped over some things that we had shot. But I, I did think it was, uh, it was done well. Is there something in your career that you haven't done yet that you'd like to do in acting wise? the kind of film that you'd like to take on? I'd like to do a straight comedy. That's really hard. People don't know how hard that is. And that, I think that would be a great challenge. I was up for a role recently and it was a character part. They, they, they said, you don't have to audition. This is an offer, but we need to see you meet with you because we're not sure if we can see you as this character. We loved you and the stuff that you've done, but this character is, uh, is an older woman. She's um, really frumpy. She's uh, 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 like a mountain woman. And I was all ready to do it. I said, this is great because I would love to do a character like that. And I knew I could do it, but they didn't see me as that. So you, you get kind of typecast. And even though I'm older, I think they expect me to... Um, maybe look different than I do. I don't know. But so it's, I don't get a lot of the roles I know I could do and would love to do. You're kind of limited by what they see here. You know, I've been approached, believe it or not, for a musical horror play. Oh my gosh. Now that- I'm not supposed to talk about, but I, I'm not giving you any details other than it's a the first horror musical. Well, there was, um, what am I saying? The Phantom of the Opera, but this is different. This is a, a real 80s horror play set to music. I would be singing a lot of my part. So I hope that happens. Have you enjoyed just the messages that you get from the fans now through social media? And, um, you know, what's what kind of stories do they tell you just about you being in that well, film? I hear stories from people about how it touched their lives. It gave them, when they were a teenager, it gave them uh, um, strength. They somehow related to me, the character. They found me to be uh, very strong and um, uh, inventive in how to save myself. So the stories are that they were going through a tough time in junior high and high school. Uh, some of them were gay coming out and bullied. So I do get so many messages from guys and girls who were bullied or who don't have self-esteem. And I talk to them about that. I, I've talked to a lot of people about that because that's very important. One thing I never lost was my self-esteem. I had a lot of stuff happen to me in life and in business, especially Hollywood. But you can't ever lose your self-esteem. You have to believe in yourself because you're going to meet people all the time to tell you you can't do it. You can't do it. No, we won't let you do that. And you just have to pick up and, and keep trying. I'm so glad you brought that up because I find I was going to bring it up. A lot of the LGBTQ community connect with yeah. these films. Myself. And I didn't know that. I found <laughs> that out over the last, let's say, 20, 15 years. Yeah. And myself included, I think there's something about, like you said, your character had strength and mm -hmm. there's something about overcoming adversity, even mm -hmm. though these films to people sometimes feel like, oh, it's just an 80s slasher flick. Mm -hmm. People who go through like self-esteem issues and struggles, especially when coming out, yeah. there is something parallel with identifying with the survivor right. that people don't always get if you're not, you know, so right. I, I, I connect with that. It's interesting the number of people that do connect with a survivor because I have seen in the convention show circuit that they are mostly drawn to the killer or the victims, not the survivor. 
But the fans, a lot of the fans bond with the survivor. But it's separate. It's, it's, it's two teams. It's a very weird thing. The, the killers and the victims are very, very, very popular and good for them. The survivor isn't quite as popular, but the ones that she's popular with are people who have been through all kinds of adversity. And I like that. How do you overcome those, that adversity for yourself being an actress in a world that's, I mean, frankly, it's tough in, in, that, yeah. in that world. Yeah, yeah. It, it's probably, you know what, it's in every field, but you're right. I think, I think showbiz is the toughest, especially on women. And I just kept the same thing I had since I was a kid. And that was, you know, it's funny. I got up every single day and had, I was so optimistic and I woke up every morning like, oh, it's a new day, no matter what happened the day before. So I still have that, thank God. And I still do that every day. Get up in the morning and say, okay, anything's possible. And that's the truth. I mean, I've proven it to myself and others. You've proven it in your life. Anything is possible. As long as you believe in yourself and you don't give I love that. And I love what you do and what you stand for. And I, I really do. I think it goes beyond just being in a horror film. You know, I think people connect with your, with you as a character, but also just as an actress. And I appreciate what you do and thank you. Um, For people who want to stay in touch or keep up with what you're doing, how can they do that? Well, I'm on Facebook, like all of you. Uh, I'm on Instagram um twitter which i don't really use that much i probably should but people usually message me and everything through facebook i'll be doing a lot of shows this year i hope people can come out and just come by and say hi i will luckily well i'm going to be in detroit michigan july 28th 29th 30th 31st um then the following month i'm going to be in pennsylvania then i'm going to be in uh, I'm thinking Atlantic City, which I'm excited about. And then I have a bunch of stuff coming up. I'm going to be in Europe. So I'm going to list all of that on my Facebook. I want to thank the fans for being so kind to me, so supportive of my career or anything I'm doing. Uh, it's been such a, such a gift, an unexpected gift. So I want to thank the fans for always, always, always supporting me.